Today, we're going to explore the city of Vienna, which got its start as a Roman castrum known as Vendabona. Great to be in historic Vienna. A lot of ancient history. The Roman Museum, besides all the great Epitz Museum and the National Museum of, uh, of Art. We've got a Roman Museum because we're standing on the ancient Roman city of Vendabona. I highly recommend you visit this museum. It's fun, it's accessible, and it's for the whole family. You get great insights into Roman Vienna. In this lovely little museum, in the heart of Vienna, you can learn all about Vindabona, the original Roman settlement here. It starts off as a military fortification and ends up being the magnificent city of Vienna. This map represents in red the castrum and in blue this city that developed around it. 300 years of Roman presence, starting with the legionary camp created in 97. This held 6,000 soldiers, and its boom time was from the 2nd to the 3rd centuries AD, with the city population peaking at 30,000 inhabitants. Of course, most of the Roman city is buried underneath modern Vienna, and you have rediscovery of that ancient town beginning in the late 19th century investigations that continue still today. And of course, this was a frontier town. And for many Roman cities, it had natural borders. And in this case, a river runs through it. Vindabona was located along the Danube. And here it is. It still flows through Vienna, a great strategic location for the Romans. They knew what they needed. Vindabona's prehistory began with the Celtic occupation of the Boy tribe. We have to move into the time of Augustus in AD 6. First legions in the area were documented under the control of the general Tiberius, fighting against the Germanic tribes. That led to, in AD 9, the creation of the province of Pannonia. Here we have an example of the earliest evidence of that Roman presence. The inscription reads that Gaius Attius, son of Quintus from the tax district of Tribus Aniensis, soldier of the 15th legion, 28 years old, 10 years of service, is buried here. So this soldier began his career at 18 years old, and after 10 years of military service here in Vindabona, he died. Under the Emperor Trajan, things dramatically changed, and in 97, Vindabona became one of the 30 legion headquarters of the empire. First stationed here from 97 to 101, was the 13th Gamina Legion. And one of the main reasons why this region became so important to Trajan was that he was fighting and winning the Dacian Wars. Here's one of those key points, one of the staging grounds for fighting those wars against the Dacians depicted on Trajan's column. Under the emperor Marcus Aurelius, again, Vindabona became a hotspot from the 160s to 180. It was here as well as nearby Cernuntum, that you have the starting point of the Roman campaigns against the Marcomanni, famously depicted on the column of Marcus Aurelius in Rome. And also it becomes a critical point in the empire in the year of the five emperors in 193, when Septimius Severus was declared emperor at Carnuntum, nearby Vindabona. And it was the legion in Vindabona as well that declared for Septimius Severus. The heart of Vindabona was the castrum, and in the Museum of the Romans, we actually see a portion of it. Who built the castrum? The legionary soldiers that were stationed here. And we know that it was 400 by 500 meters. That's over 54 acres. And we have the remains discovered of the fortress gates with some inscriptions. We even have some of the headquarters building with glass and pieces of Roman fresco. There is a hospital documented, and the museum gives us a thorough understanding of the life of the soldier on the frontiers, fighting the Marcomannic Wars, ultimately building even an aqueduct that leads into the city. But what we do have underneath the museum space as we descend the steps is part of the homes of the officers. 
and this is something that's great for everybody that's interested in ancient Rome. We get real insight here into some of the structures. And what we see here in one room is part of a hypocaust system. So you have heated floors passing through. Think about those cold nights in Vindabona in the winter. We also have an assortment of other inscriptions found from the nearby vicinity. So it's a great didactic experience that allows you to make your way through a series of rooms. And it's really uh, interesting to, to understand as we go through here, just how much of a good living experience was afforded to the officers to have so much of their homes heated. Now, this is a series of domiciles that will go through several periods. And through our experience of the museum, we're getting all kinds of artifacts that are part of uh, daily life, domestic space, and use. And this reconstruction is giving us a sense of the size and the scale of that castrum. The Roman soldiers always had to be protected, but inside a perfect street grid preserved enough for the archaeologists to understand the workings of the military life in Vindabona. Back to the houses of the officers, we have also tubuli that go right up through the walls, giving great radiant heat. As you traverse the basement of the museum, you get a real sense of a series of rooms and sophisticated Roman building techniques with brickwork and concrete. And we're so fortunate because we actually have an amazing piece of information about who lived in these houses. A certain Lucius, Lulius, Apronius, Minius, Pius, Salamalianus. And his name, Salamalianus, indicates he's from originally Arabia. And we know that he married the daughter of the governor of Pannonia, a certain Lucius Afinius Avidianus. And this soldier later on went to become a governor in Galatia and even Numidia under Alexander Severus. So it's incredible to think about the life of a Roman soldier and how they're being sent to far-flung areas of the empire, hopefully surviving, making a career, and ultimately becoming a real protagonist in the Roman Empire. Such was the life of our protagonist, Pius Salamalianus, originally from Arabia, who ends up in Vindabona, and finally a governor in the far-flung provinces of the Roman Empire. They are great didactics. They are great examples of the finds from Roman Vindabona, including this Hercules battle. Uh, it's a relief work that might have been part of a tomb or a public monument. And you have the excavation site of the necropolis outside the city borders. But here we have an understanding with this map of the city that creates sprawls along outside the castrum. And what's also outside the castrum is the baths on the right and to the left of the castrum it's the amphitheater. So, of course, Romans enjoy great Roman blood sport in their own local amphitheater. And we have burials that document the lives of the Romans, oftentimes coming from all over the empire. Here's a soldier that comes from Rimini. He's from the 10th Legion. And ultimately, what happens with this tombstone? It's cut to be made into a millstone after the Roman Empire falls. So we get a lot of insights of Roman Vindabona with the artifacts that are found. Here is Terra Sigillata of the 2nd century AD that depicts gladiatorial fights, and we also know that those gladiatorial games were visible in the local amphitheater. We also have a substantial aqueduct very heavily documented throughout the 20th century that gives us this very accurate um, reconstruction of the water channel and the water route, even the Castellum Aquae are represented here bringing water into the castrum. So you don't get your water from the Danube, you get it from much better water quality from springs. Impressive discoveries are being made in the 20th century, including this silver hoard. We have the documentation of various gods that are worshiped in the city of Indabona, including Mithras. We also have a rich display of statuary, bronze and marble. And this is the scenario that we have in today's Vienna. As you modernize, as you urbanize, you're going to obviously investigate and turn up more Roman ruins. So where do we experience Roman Vindabona besides the Museum of the Romans? 
walk in the heart of the city. Go explore St. Stephen's Cathedral and go up the spire where you get a magnificent view, 67 meters up, of the outline of the castrum. You can also wander the streets of the historic center and be surprised. Here and there, there are still signs of Roman Vindabona exposed. Try to get a sense of what Roman Vindabona was like, but here's an excavation in the heart of the city down in the 90s, connecting us to the Roman past of Vienna. Puts a smile on my face. What ultimately happened to Roman Vindabona? Well, you've got a major border crisis taking place in the empire in the period of crisis in the late 200s. And then you're going to have a more militarized fortress town, heavily damaged in an earthquake around 350. It's going to be reinforced under Valentinian I, but the last time it's mentioned as an important bastion is in the 350s. There is a settlement of Germanic allies in 378, and ultimately that life, that presence, Roman Vindabona, is over by AD 430. Thank you guys so much for joining me in Roman Vienna. Keep on following along. We'll go all throughout the empire. Special access, insights into the ancient world, Rome and empire. <laughs>